You're watching Flow Working, the entrepreneur's podcast. I'm your host, Megan Anderson. More people than ever are starting the entrepreneur journey and learning a lot in the process. On this show, I sit down with regular people who are running all types of businesses to discuss the ideas, opportunities, and strategies they're using to build, grow, and thrive as an entrepreneur. Before we get started, make sure you tap the button and subscribe to the channel. Then hit like and share your favorite videos with others. Okay, now on with the show. Hello and welcome to this episode. I'm your host, Megan Anderson, and today I'm joined by my guest, Alex Oliveira. As a transformative leader of multiple successful companies, Brazilian-born Alex has helped companies advance their brands by executing interactive marketing campaigns for over 12 years. From SMBs to Fortune 500 brands like Ford and Allstate, Alex enjoys a diverse portfolio of clients. Alex's major passions include adventuring with his wife and four kids, investing in startups, and giving back to the community. Alex, welcome to the show. I'm excited to have a conversation with you today. Megan, thanks for having me on your on the podcast. Yes. So we're going to talk some marketing, but let's first talk about what's your favorite way to adventure with your kids? Do you like traveling? Do you like hiking, the ocean? What's your favorite way to do some adventuring? Yeah, definitely. I Traveling for me and my wife from when we met in college 22 years later, we're still doing that. We've gone, you know, all over the world. And but what we love to do here in, from from Florida is get in our little RV trailer yeah. and we've got four kids and we hop on and we go explore and we get the best of both worlds in the southeast here because, you know, you've got the coast. So you're on the beach. Oftentimes you can be in an RV uh, park that's literally on the beach and then you can go inland and do some hiking and of course it's pretty flat in florida but Mm -hmm. as you get further north north florida (laughs) there's a little bit more hills there not as much as colorado not like here but that's well that sounds like fun i love that my partner and i are big travelers as well so always fun to get our out and travel and with kids you know heck get them out of the house get them traveling get them adventuring well that sounds like a lot of fun so when you're not traveling and adventuring sounds like marketing's your area of expertise. So we're going to dive into a little bit of that today. Um, I know I see this all the time on LinkedIn. You know, people hop in my DM and talk about, hey, I can get you a hundred new clients. Let's do lead generation. But let's talk a little bit about what lead generation actually looks like and some effective ways that you can help people actually do that uh, for their businesses. Sure. And I agree. I get those messages, those email inquiries, even through the website all the time, even phone calls, appointment setting, you know, I'll get you sales, I'll get you in front of people. But ultimately, I think you, what businesses need to understand, whether it's a solo business, a solopreneur, or a business with employees, and you have a sales team is, are these marketing leads, marketing qualified leads, Mm -hmm. we refer to MQLs, or sales qualified leads it's very mm-hmm. different you know one is cold the other one is warmer one is really top of the funnel maybe awareness um maybe the the the, the person you're going to talk to wasn't even interested in mm-hmm. in a product your product or service they, they don't even have that pain point and here you are going yeah yes you do here buy this from me and then you follow up and you wonder why you don't close these leads look generally speaking you know there's a good percentage of people at any given time who are going to say Okay, Megan, let's say you were the appointment setting lead gen expert. You know, you re, uh, do an outreach campaign, you're probably going to get, you know, 5, 10% of the people who, who say, okay, Megan, sure, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get on your list and talk to whoever you want me to talk to and yeah. see what you're offering. But they don't actually need it, right? Yeah. The people who need it are the people inbound, inbound leads, whether it's in that micro moment where someone needs a plumber or a dentist or a mechanic Mm -hmm. or new tires and they're going to the search engines they're not going to social media most people are not going to social media when they need their problem solved if they happen to be on social media and you're offering them a product or service okay but even then they're in the playground mindset right they're in the entertainment world even linkedin how many ads do you see on LinkedIn that you're like, yeah, whatever, I'm interested in the news or topic of the day yep. so I can feel smart. So really you need to figure out the difference between that awareness, top of the funnel, just kind of, it feels good, I'm letting people know about my business, mm-hmm. or towards the bottom of the funnel, which is closer to converting into a sale. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the funnel. You know, this this comes up all the time, especially for entrepreneurs, because you hear this 
you know, you read books or you talk to people and they're like, you got to have a funnel. You got to have this capture. You got to do this. Okay. It, I, I'm, I'm making the face because it can be complicated and difficult. I, and I have a feeling that you're saying it doesn't have to be massively no. complicated. Absolutely. I've actually, you know, for the past like five years, gotten away from using funnels as my graphic uh, for that reason, because it, it, it says that every customer is going to take the same journey. Hi, I'm here. Awareness. You saw me in social or an ad and then you get my email and then I call you. And then, But that's not how it works. It depends on where they come from. So a workflow has to be a little bit I wouldn't say complicated, but you have to think about your customer journey. And everyone who's listening to this podcast, if you have customers, all you have to do is retrace the path, you know, from where that customer came and how they got there. So let's just say for a lot of business owners, if they're a small business owner, solopreneur, they're doing it word of mouth still. Yep. They're still going out in the community, belong to the chamber, whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, groups on Facebook, on LinkedIn, but it is a very much like referral base. Mm -hmm. uh, a type of lead gen. So retrace that. Like, why are people recommending you? And then once they do, do they come to your website? Do they call you? Do they text you? Do they DM mm -hmm. you? And then in each one of those communication, because these are communication channels, not marketing, communication, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So these communication channels and tools, what, what do you do from there? Do you just send them like a, a download a ebook? Do you mm -hmm. say, oh, sure, I'll call you in 48 hours? Because in 48 hours might might be too long. Mm -hmm. You might talk to your clients and find out that, well, actually, I almost didn't go with you because you took two days to get back to me. And you're yeah. like, oh my God, I have heard this, Megan, from, from clients that come to us and say, well, we don't believe in this five minute speed to contact follow up. We don't believe in that because we don't want to seem like we are desperate. Ooh. I said, what are you talking about? People <laughs> want to call somewhere or, or put their web inquiry and they want to look at their smartphone and see that thing ringing. And you yeah. tell me like, listen, I was looking for, you know, a lawyer, a, a dentist yeah. or whatever it is. And I want to know now, are we going to have an appointment? Are you going to tell me that what you're offering? How much? When, you know, when are you available? I don't want to sit around and wait for days because if I have to do that, I'll just continue to go to the other marketplaces and search engines. Yep. So speed to contact in lead generation is very important. Interesting. So for a lot of the um, listeners here, they're the coaches and the consultants of the world who, sorry, folks, I fall into this category too. We have a really bad reputation for slow response because mm -hmm. we often talk about, oh, well, it's about the relationship. So I've got to build it. Again, let's talk about the funnel. But you're talking about, no, you actually could, someone reaches out and says, hey, Alex referred me to you. Let's hop mm -hmm. on a call today. Absolutely. Or here's a, a better way to do it on your contact form, your landing page, the landing page that you, you, you have your call to action, your headline, all the, mm -hmm. the goodies. And then you have your form. Yeah. Instead of just putting an open-ended form that says first name, last name, email, phone number, and company, and then hit get evaluation or schedule a call. Yeah. Instead of doing that, actually do a two-step. Capture the information, the personal identifying information. Okay. I've captured that. But the second step to that, give me the opportunity to pick a, a, a time and date oh. on your calendar. Oh. Wow. You just solved and eliminated like three, four more steps. Yep. Who loves going back and forth on email? Oh, are you available this day? Oh, you mean EST? No, CST. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, what are you talking yep. about? Just tell me, it, you know, it's a booking system, right? And yep. Facebook, Google, um, all those platforms have free appointment setting yep. plugins that you can use. So this isn't like a something that you have to go invent or build into your website, but every client that I do that with, especially the coaches and, mm -hmm. and consultants, they're like, oh my God, now my, calen my calendar is actually being used in real time. It's yeah. incredible. I couldn't, I honestly, I'm, I'm usually about 90 days booked on this podcast. I couldn't do it without a scheduling link. I, I did it literally one day. I opened my calendar, 14 people responded and I went, oh no, no, take my calendar yeah. like you find it. I'm not going back and forth. Cause you just, you're just like, wait, wait, wait. That's just too much. Even yeah. if it's only a couple of people, let them find the time. So I love that advice, that immediate, whether it's pick up the phone and call or just schedule with me right now. Yeah. Like don't. And the call. 
Yeah. What, what you just said, the call is so important. I mean, yeah. to me, I can't believe how many people just shoot out an email. Every opportunity we have to, if you gave us a phone number, we're calling you. Yeah. And for our clients, I obsess with that too. Yep. The first thing you should do is not email, not, not an autoresponder email. You should call, hello, we got your inquiry or hello, we got your phone call. You're interested in talking to us. We're interested in talking to you. Here's our phone number. Here's who you should call. You know, yep. if it's like a big company, okay, great. You're, you're going to say, you know, just press this or press that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, now you have that. And then beyond that, you can start that SMS and the yeah. email. But how often I, when we're doing um, audits, so like a, a customer journey audit, mm -hmm. and you're looking through and you said, yeah, but I, I don't understand why it's taking you two, three days to call someone that gave you their phone number. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, and yeah. you're losing out. No, oh, so, yeah, people walk, we walk around with these in our hands. We're always yeah. on them if the phone rings. Most of us, I don't always, but a lot of people at least, who was that? It, oh, it went to voicemail. Okay, I'm going to, you know, and then the text follows up and you're like, oh, yeah. that that's what I inquired about. So right. we talk a lot about, you know, okay, so they've scheduled or now they're, you know, we've got their information and now they're on our email list or now they've gone to our website. So you use the term, and I hadn't heard this, but I love the term owned media. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what that means and how to utilize that particular type of media for your business. Sure. So if you could think about um, looking at uh, a chart that says owned media, paid media, shared media, and there's many different types of digital media mm -hmm. channels. The, the reason I focus on own media is because this is the channel online that you actually own and fully control. Okay. Forget the algorithm on the search engines for a second. Cause I know I'll have marketers who say, well, Alex, the website is controlled by algorithms, but wait a minute, that's not true. Only if I depend on search engine traffic. Yeah. Now, if I have a method and a means to get users directly to my website, there is no friction. As a matter of fact, the only thing between me and you is the actual bandwidth and, and whether my hosting can handle it or not. Mm -hmm. So if I can get a thousand clicks a month directly to my website, there is no Google or Facebook or anyone else taking up your screen. It's just me and you. So my, my, my headline, my call to action, my value proposition, it's just, there's no disruption there, right? Mm -hmm. So the own media, one piece of it is for bringing in the customer. So that's your website, must have a website, you have to have landing pages for all your products and services. Landing pages are different than the full website or homepage. It annoys me when I see a paid ad campaign on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, and I click on the ad and I go to the homepage. I said, well, what a waste there. You just threw away your money because I'm on your homepage. You've got a bunch of buttons, bunch of different calls yeah. to action about us. And all I wanted was to, you know, learn more about this specific product. Yep. So, Landing pages, for those of you who don't know, is one of the key components to a great lead gen campaign mm -hmm. because no navigation button, certainly no social media links or mm -hmm. icons on the header. No. Very short. Think of it like a flyer. Mm -hmm. Think of it like a, a postcard. It's very specific about that product or service. Mm -hmm. And if it's a product, it's a product, add to cart. If it's a service, it's a form. I want you to fill out the form, give me yep. your information. That's it, nothing else. Yep. And then once they're on my website, then great, we, we can now start that conversation. And then the second part of the own media is the, the content that you create and serve to them via multiple channels, but primarily that other own channel, which is email. Mm -hmm. If you have your customers, your prospects, your leads email, well, now you, you can nurture it. You can segment it and you can customize the messaging based on what they told you on the form. Mm -hmm. Now, you could make a big mistake like some do out there too, which is to say, you know what? I'm just going to give it to you like a fire hose, Alex. I know you were interested in yellow, but I'm just going to send you an email about black, blue, green. And what? Yeah. Why are you wasting my time, right? Yep. So I, I think of it as a consumer. And most of us are already in these funnels. Um, companies like Best Buy, Nike, Chewy, um, there, there's so many Alta for the ladies, mm -hmm. right? And I see it because I, I always love to study these these sort of uh, marketing campaigns. Yep. They have it right. I mean, what I I could subscribe just with an email on Alta.com, and my wife can subscribe. We're gonna get two completely different emails, same yep. household, 
Why? Because they're using appending systems to get, gather more information about me mm -hmm. and then say, well, okay, we know that Alex is a male, this such and such age, these are demographics. Yep. So we're going to send them stuff about male self-care. Yep. I mean, that's next level and very dynamic, but this sure. is the level where your conversion just goes through the roof. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so for, you, you know, and that <laughs> I sit there and go, oh my gosh, you mean I have to, and we really don't. But segmenting a list is really simple. You know, for, for the solopreneur, we've mm -hmm. got our email marketing, you know, I, I use MailChimp, there's cost of contact, there's lots of others, CRMs have them built in, but you've got your emailing. It's not hard to segment out. And like you said, oh, you came to me through this and, and, and you know, you filled out this form. Well, you don't yeah, want to know about all this other things, like just you're, this. You're right, Megan. And it, it goes a step further than, than that. If you're, if you're sending out emails, you're doing your newsletter updates, blasts, and you're sending emails and you're not segmenting, here's what you're telling me. That means that you actually don't have your personas built. That's it. So even beyond email or before email or in any, you know, in any of like the marketing channels, if you're not segmenting and customizing the messaging, it tells me that you're saying, well, everybody everybody is just one person they're all one age so yep. if you're not segmenting your emails chances are you need to go back to the drawing table and create customer personas right mm, so put yeah. them in group ages give them a name the the the, the behaviors the interests mm -hmm. their education level their income the list goes on and on and on yep. once you've got them grouped now you can say okay bucket a bucket b bucket c yep. this is where these emails go done you have it segmented yep. now you could feel good that your marketing campaigns actually ha are are based on personas yes so i will say uh this was something i actually literally today went in and turned off a campaign because i realized i made a boo-boo <laughs> uh, okay. I, I post i'm post my podcast daily i turned on my rss feed hey tell every single human in my list every single day that there's something new okay so imagine when i just did, and i realized i did i was like i'm blowing people up that's fantastic and i'm losing people like unsubscribe unsubscribe and i was like what is going on i thought i turned it on monthly oh and i went day. in and went oh that wow. says daily so little things like that just knowing what your campaigns are doing knowing who they're going to you know like Agreed. not not blowing your piece so that was just something i recently did an email and i went oh and it's so easy to do especially if you're the just the solopreneur or diying it so for those people who are diying it let's talk a little bit about customer experience customer journey because some of us you know we may only have one type of customer or one stream of customer mm. where it's that big data is accessible to us but we've got to build it first so what's a yeah. really easy way or, you know, straightforward way to kind of build that customer experience journey that we may not have the big data yet to actually utilize? Sure. And I, I think, look, the tools that, that uh, we just discussed in own media, like your website, like your email, those are going to offer up a lot of great insights. It doesn't have to be complicated. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you as a business owner, if you're talking marketing, if you're hiring an agency or a freelancer, just first of all, before you start the campaign, know your objective. Is mm -hmm. it to create awareness? Is it to generate leads? What is it, right? Mm -hmm. So know that. And if you know that, then you probably know your KPIs. So your key performance indicators are, let's say it was going to be for my email list, I want to get my open rate to 30% because it's at 10%. Sure. Great. That's the KPI. So my objective is I'm going to create an email campaign. Uh, with a sequence and the main goal is to get it to 30% because I yep. see that when it's at 30%, the click through rate is X. Yep. So take that data and start to make sense of it, right? Because the customer experience is impacted by everything that you're doing in this sort of uh, uh, path. Let's not say funnel. Yeah. Let's just, <laughs> just path to, from point A to point B. If you were looking at a map, I always tell my kids that, right? Like yep. you want to be ready. Don't be lost. Like if we're going from here to Colorado, we need a map so yep. we can avoid like falling into like a volcano or something yep. like that. Yep. So if you have your map, that means that you know your customer journey, which let goes even a step before that, that we were talking about with Legion, your personas, mm -hmm. all these things interconnect. 
And it all, co all comes down to the customer experience. So for those of you who are like, well, Alex, hey, man, you know, like I know my customer experience. They're pretty mm -hmm. happy because they're yeah. most of my clients have been with me three, four, five, six years. And I said, OK, well, have those customers, the revenue per customer has been going up. The lifetime value, meaning referrals. Do they give you referrals? Mm -hmm. Like what? How much more value do they have to you year after year? Because if you if they don't, it's not that you're looking at them as a cash cow, but it's actually the opposite way. Are you potentially not serving them to the best of your abilities? Yeah. You don't know that. Yeah. Maybe you don't have a product line or or something that you could solve their their pain points, and they're going elsewhere. And then that elsewhere, before you know it, will start offering your product or service. Yep. And then you're like, voila, you lost that client. Mm -hmm. So talk to your customers. I'm not a fan of digital surveys like Survey Monkey, unless you're doing like a big blast. Yeah. Um, I'm more of a fan of just picking up the phone and saying, yeah. hey, Jane, you've been with us for a while, whether it's coaching or whatever else you're mm -hmm. offering them. Are you happy? What would you like to see different? What do you like about our website? Yeah. Do you like our emails? Um, what other content do you think if we create, if we created a podcast or a, a video series, would you like that? Yeah. Um, when I onboarded you, I sent you a little envelope. If I made it a box with other, like mm -hmm. you could have these conversations because your customers will tell you. Yep. Generally speaking, they will tell you. They're not going to tell you you're horrible. No. And obviously, <laughs> if, if they're talking to you that you're not horrible, you're yeah. you're okay. But I know from time to time, and I have heard from clients in my own company, like the takeaway is like, wow, they're just saying we're okay. Mm -hmm. based on the feedback. They're not yeah. saying we're outstanding. And then you have another segment that they're like, yeah, you guys are awesome. I'm with you for life. And you're like, what are we doing different there? Yeah, That gets to the customer experience. And yep. lo and behold, Megan, we find out that, oh, for a customer B, we took them from point A to point B down a different path. Yeah. We skipped a few steps. Why? I'm not even sure why. Yeah. But it comes back to constantly analyzing yeah. the data. Yeah. No, I think that's a really great point as we wrap up, especially for those who are the solopreneur or the little tiny teams, is that your existing customers or even the one who just left you, exit interviews, getting data by picking up the phone and saying, hey, I know you left or hey, I know you work with us and asking questions. One especially if it's your current customer, they get so excited that you're engaging them in a different way. Like, oh, you want my opinion about your business? I love that. But then it really gets you that information and listening, like asking the question and then listening to the answer and then putting it to practice. That just, it makes such yeah. a difference. Such you're, a difference. You're so right. That's such powerful. That's a powerful piece of advice there, yes. Megan, because we do that and we hear all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you are too expensive. Mm. I, I, you, you know, I didn't understand your reports as well, mm. which then begs the question, what about all the times that we asked you about the reports? Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. It's water under the bridge. They're probably giving me an excuse. Yep. Uh, or other clients were like, actually, we've been with you for three years and we felt like even though you're helping us and we've grown, um, we felt like we give somebody else a try because maybe they would help us go even further. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Maybe they feel like we're a little stale. We're not, but that's okay if they feel yeah. that way. Um, other times they're just saying like, look, budget is tough or mm -hmm. the marketing director left. There's yeah. so many reasons, but you're so great. That piece of advice that yeah. you just gave. Yeah, no, it's it's always important to ask and never be afraid. I think that a lot of us get afraid of, oh, it's rejection and they didn't like me or, oh, that client's going to leave if I ask if I'm doing okay. And it's just, it's all data and it's all to help in that customer experience as you grow your company. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? what? I'll give you another piece of advice for your listeners that I didn't understand 20 years ago early on in other businesses, mm -hmm. that concentration of customers, you know, the 80-20 rule that we always hear. I used to have that problem, 80% of revenue with 20%, actually probably with 5% of the customers. Yeah. It was like three, four clients represented 80%. I, over time, worked really hard to make sure that the concentration of revenue never exceeded 5%. Now, I know some people that never exceeds 2% or 1%, and the yeah. bigger you get, it's even less. But the, this is so important because when you get that feedback, it's from a lot of different clients. You're not just depending on the one big client who's telling you all these things, and you're like, oh, we, we got to make sure that we do everything to keep that yeah. one because if that one leaves, 
I got to fire 10 people and then I got to like, who knows, potentially yeah. close a business, which we see all the time. So that whole customer experience thing, I, I think always gets in my head the, the question about what, what does the, the, the customer base look like? Yeah. You know, the different segments, the, which gets back to personas and all of that. Yeah. And if you're studying all of that and making sense with your financial reports and sales reports, you, you're going to learn a lot. You know, you're going to learn a lot. Yeah, no, it's it's really, really true that in, in marketing, it's it is data, but it doesn't have to be big data. It can just no. be some some direct data from those customers. So, Alex, this has been a fantastic, enlightening conversation. A bit about how to lead gen and, and get some data for ourselves. If the audience listening is interested in getting connected with you, hearing more from you, having a conversation with you, what's a really great way for them to do that right now? And they can just go to my personal website, which is dadpreneur.co dadpreneur.co. All right. So to listeners or watchers, tap down below. That link is right down below and you can get connected directly with Alex. Thank you for joining me, Alex, and sharing your wisdom with the audience. I appreciate you being on the show today. You're welcome, Megan. To my audience, I am wishing you peace as you flow off to the rest of your business day, and we will talk again soon. Thank you for watching this episode of Flow Working, the Entrepreneur's Podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And while you're here, watch another episode for more advice about being a successful entrepreneur.